Welcome to Florida Baby. Introducing Dr. Narco Longo. The Linear Park at Plantation Preserve, Golf Course and Club. The People. Few communities are as integrated with a facility of pure pleasure as Plantation is with the Plantation Golf Course, quotes a May 1953 edition of the Miami Herald. Even before Plantation was a city, its residents had a golf course. Local residents played year-round, and winter residents flocked in numbers to the brand new facility. So isn't that interesting? They had a golf course before a city. The place. The first Plantation Golf Club was constructed in 1950, under the watchful eye of Fred Peters on 300 acres of his original 10,000-acre tract of land. It was built to stimulate interest in plantation and to encourage the Broward County Commission to extend Broward Boulevard farther west. Three miles of winding waterways and 5,000 trees provided plenty of challenge. And a historically significant Tequesta burial mound was discovered near the 14th hole. Robert F. Red Lawrence designed the golf course, and Russell Pancos designed the clubhouse. Once completed, it immediately became an integral part of the life of the community. The past. The area that became the city of Plantation was undeveloped. Its only inhabitants were alligators, snakes, and other wild animals. The land was partially drained due to the construction of the Holloway Canal in 1906 and was ultimately filled in to allow for farmland and pasture for grazing cattle. Fred Peters was able to look out over the sawgrass and marshlands and envision a vibrant, beautiful, well-planned city. It was this vision that led to our city's motto. I'm going to poorly pronounce some Latin now. E vasitate hec herbs, or out of the wilderness, this city. Here we are in Plantation, Florida, and we are taking a walk down the 14th hole of the Plantation Golf Course, and we will be showing golf courses are indeed built on burial grounds. This happened very often. Here are some various headlines. Indian Mound Golf Club on Jekyll Island, unironically, Indian Mound Course. A push to move the golf course atop a Native American Stonehenge. So that one's Ohio. Indian Village found in 1993, buried under the Sanctuary Golf Course. This Ohio golf course, built atop a Hopewell earthwork, is now the subject of a lawsuit. Golf club built on slaves' graves sparks debate on how to honor the dead. So we're approaching the 14th hole of this golf course, which they turned into a nature preserve, or a nature trail. And as I was saying, when you see how many golf courses are built on top of burial mounds, you start to get the feeling that it's no coincidence. Especially in Florida, they'll say there's no hilly land, so they had to use the mounds as golf courses. That was the best starting place, right? Very funny, in my opinion. Here we took a short stop 
at some cocoa plums. For those that don't know, cocoa plums pretty much grow all over South Florida. They're these little uh, plum looking guys. They have a slightly bland taste but are very very good for you and can be pretty much plucked right off the plant and eaten. So growing up in South Florida, you're never far from a golf course. And I grew up walking on these golf courses, sneaking on to them and running around. And even as you grow up, they have such a sense of tranquility. It's easy to understand how men will sit out there for hours on end. And believe it or not, as we were looking for this burial mound, we stumbled onto someone's uh, shrine, kind of, or prayer space, whatever you want to call it. And earlier this day, we'd stopped in Opalaka, Florida, to look at the city hall and the architecture there. And we found a shrine there, too. That one was different than this one. It was more of like a fruit offering. But um, we knew we were getting close when we found this shrine, that we must be close to the burial mound. There must be some juju going on. And like I said, very good vibes out on golf courses, even if you're not playing. Now, just down the trail here, is the burial mound itself. And you'll see we're walking along this path. And what you're seeing right there is the mound. And everything on the right side of this path was the burial grounds. And it's hard to make it out as a mound, but you have to remember this whole area was being re-sculpted into a golf course and they were taking earth out of some locations, piling it in, into others, which is very typical of golf courses. So what you're seeing is what used to be the 14th hole of the golf course. They moved the 14th hole, created a new hole, and this piece of land became a nature preserve, essentially. And you can walk out into this nature preserve uh, in the middle of an active golf course. So it is very unique, as we're going to see. We're going to read the plaque up here. The Linear Park at Plantation Preserve, Golf Course and Club. One of the most unique aspects of the plantation preserve, which holds the history and mystery of this particular parcel of land, is located near the 14th hole of the original golf course. Found in 1950, during the clearing and excavation of the original plantation golf course, were bones, shards of pottery, and other artifacts that belonged to the prehistoric Tequesta Indians. Historians can trace their existence in South Florida as far back as 2,000 years ago. Their first recorded European contact was in 1513 AD, when a Spanish expedition led by Pedro Menendez de Aviles arrived on Florida shores to establish a European settlement. Their numbers at that time were in the hundreds. However, the population slowly dwindled over time due to warfare, slavery, and disease. When human remains and other artifacts were unearthed, historians marked the site to be left undisturbed until 1976 when the Broward County Archaeological Society was able to investigate and excavate the site. For the history of the Tequesta tribes, visit the Plantation Historical Museum. The Tequesta Indians were Native Americans who made their home throughout South Florida. From Boca Raton, south to the Keys, the Broward County Archaeology Society first documented the site, and in 1976, excavations were conducted here. The old Plantation Golf Club mound is a small site, perhaps indicating a nomadic hunting camp. As a result of this great find, 
Each of the 18 holes of the original Plantation Golf Club bore Indian names.